Elizabeth Mittendorf at MD Anderson in Houston. Before I began my surgical oncology fellowship and after my residency, I had a four-year period during which I was on active duty in the Air Force, and I had the opportunity at that time to be at Walter Reed, which is in the nation's capital. While I was there, I was introduced to a surgeon by the name of George Peoples, and George was very interested in tumor immunology and the possibility that we could harness the immune system with vaccination uh, to have a positive impact on breast cancer patients. When I went to MD Anderson, I had the opportunity to bring some of the clinical trials he was involved with to our institution. And then I was fortunate as, again, as an assistant professor that my chair provided me the opportunity to get my PhD in immunology. And so that's what has served as a foundation of my research, which has largely remained focused on tumor immunology and immunotherapy, looking at ways to harness a patient's immune system to fight their breast cancer. The really fun thing for me is that um, I kind of tell folks I was immunotherapy before it was cool. So obviously immunotherapy is very hot in the field of oncology right now. And so what's been really gratifying is to be able to take so some of the work that we started when I first became involved with the vaccine program uh, all the way through from phase one to phase two to a phase three trial. And then to watch as the field's grown to recognize that vaccination by itself probably isn't going to be the answer. So to then to be able to broaden our program to look at other forms of immunotherapy. The thing that I've taken probably the most pride in with respect to my research program is the longitudinal nature. And so an observation that we made very early on, we've carried from phase one to phase two, phase three. During those other trials, we made another observation about the benefit of vaccination with the HER2 antibody trastuzumab, and so now we've gone off on another direction looking at that combination both in the laboratory and clinical trials. So the ability to take an observation and carry it through longitudinally like that has been very rewarding to me. I think the one thing that I have said to uh, colleagues, to mentees, to the research staff, uh, when asked about my career and why I like to do what I do, it's because I really like the, the variety. I like the fact that on Monday I'm going to the clinic, Tuesday I'm in the OR, and I get the satisfaction of curing a lot of people of breast cancer with an operation. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I'm in the lab or thinking about our clinical trials. These are very different mentalities, whereas I can cut to cure on Tuesday. What we're trying to do Wednesday through Friday with our research program is to look 5, 10, 15 years into the future. And the opportunity to do both has been so rewarding to me. And I'll tell folks, like, if you had a bad day in the clinic because, you know, you had a difficult patient or whatever, when you go to the lab, the mouse isn't going to argue with you. But if you have a bad day in the lab because the experiment that you'd set up two weeks ago didn't work, then you're glad that you can go back on Tuesday and operate because you know that you're going to have a positive impact on patients. So I've really enjoyed the interplay, um, both with respect to how it's helped me to, I hope, advance the field, but also with respect to what it's given me with respect to career satisfaction. As a very junior faculty member, I think it's a critical thing to address with your chair and your mentor. When I started my first academic position at MD Anderson, I was very fortunate to have a K award from the NIH, and so the institution and my chair were very good about protecting my time, and so I was able to learn how to balance the time I spent in the lab with the time I spent in the clinic and the skills that I developed while I was protected, per se, by that K award have really carried through for the past 10 years. Uh, I've joked in the past that I have to be just as busy in the clinic as my clinical colleagues and just as productive in the lab as my PhD laboratory colleagues, and I know that that's not entirely true, but the bar is pretty high for a physician scientist to be uh, proficient and successful in, in both, both domains. For the very junior folks, so the students and the residents, what I would encourage them to do is to identify a mentor who can help really inspire them and help really engender the passion, which means to find the mentor who seems to have that passion. If you find an attending who's really excited about what they're doing and you are equally enthusiastic about learning from them, they'll embrace you and provide opportunities. Most people who are 
trying to perform research as a significant component of their, component of their career, whether it be as a laboratory-based researcher, uh, an outcomes researcher, a clinical trialist. In many ways, we're asking ourselves to do more than one full-time job because we have to balance our clinical load as well. And so it's a group of folks who probably are a little bit overcommitted and overextended. And then as folks get a little bit more senior, you frequently have responsibilities to your institution committees and, and whatnot. So I actually think that some of the most effective mentors are some of the folks who themselves are a little bit more junior and still being mentored themselves because these are folks who have the time to spend with students. And so for students and residents, I think finding an enthusiastic assistant professor can be a really good opportunity to find mentorship.